Hello everyone. Today we're looking at this. This is a Motorola BT Emerald, what's known as a BT Emerald. This is in fact based on, uh, uh, well, it looks like a Motorola 1000, but uh, whereas the Motorola 1000 operates on GSM, this actually operates uh, on ETAX. Um, these were uh, released by British Telecom or Motorola um, in the uh, in the 1990s, so very early 1990s. Um, this one, I think, that from going from the serial number um, is, uh, I think, June 1990. Uh, or July 1990, I'm not sure. Um, so um, it, it, what's important to note is that um, they did several variants of this. Um, and just because the phone looks like this doesn't actually mean it's analog. Um, there are obviously GSM versions of this, but this particular one is uh, the BT Emerald version. Uh, just to give you some sort of idea, um, that is obviously analog. Um, if you were to compare that to this, uh, this is actually uh, a digital version. Uh, this is a Motorola 1000, and this will still operate um, on today's cell phone networks um, on GSM 900. If you compare the two, actually, um, the um, the layout of the keys is, is very, very similar. Let's take the handset off because um, if you compare that, uh, apart from the keys being black, obviously, they did do white key ones like this as well, just I don't have one. Um, or I don't have one to hand, I should say. Um, I do actually have one. Um, so what's important to note with this one is you can't use the uh, the BT Emerald is is um, is ETAX, and obviously they shut off ETAX uh, cell towers quite some time ago, um, probably about 10, 12 years ago. So um, well, I want to talk about this. Um, quickly fire this one up um, and uh, and go through the menu quickly and um, and just show you what you got um, when you bought one of these back in the day. Uh, this one's got the original number, um, so if that was your number and you owned one of these, then um, this is your phone. So what's um, what's what's good about this particular one is uh, it's got a nice little strap, and uh, the bottom of the strap actually um, has a, a nice feel, um, sort of leather little cushiony thing. So you you could carry that quite nicely around, um, as opposed to um, you know normally carrying it from from the handle here. And this was quite uncomfortable. So this was an optional accessory. So um, th this phone operates with the usual 2,000 milliampere battery, which is this, and um, it slots right in here. Um, before I do that, though, uh, I'm going to show you quickly how to take one of these apart. Obviously, you press that, the handset comes undone. Um, you can then unplug the handset. This is just a, a standard RJ45. And um, the antenna's down here, which swivels. Um, and if you want to get the actual phone part out, which is this bit here, um, what you do is you lift that. And that pops out. And this is actually the phone itself. Um, and um, the uh, the Motorola Express Exchange Centers, um, they would uh, connect a, a data cable to this and obviously reprogram it uh, and unlock it if it was locked. Um, and this is just a generic um, cradle. Uh, in fact, I, I, I would actually probably hedge my bets that you could actually take the GSM version uh, of a phone like this, which would be something like this, um, and slot that in uh, and then put the correct handset on and uh, it would work because um, apart from obviously the branding here, um, this these are quite generic so um and this doesn't really weigh much uh, the bulk of the weight is actually this thing here um this is probably pound and a half possibly even two pounds actually uh, and these are the thin version this is this is actually the a thin phone um if you if you if you think some of these that came out a uh, similar sort of time they um the, the phone part of this which is this actually had much thicker ones um just to show you all um I do actually have one here. Um, try and get this this guy off. This guy's a bit stiff, unfortunately. Um, try and I should have really prepared this, but this is all off the cuff. So um, if you look at this, this is also the phone, and actually, this is twice as thick as that one. Um, they obviously had uh, much more advanced. Um, uh, circuit boards in this one much more compact uh, if you open up one of these there's uh, there's two long circuit boards running along here whereas these ones only have one 
um, but this has some really old components on it as well so uh, wor worth worth making a note of anyway so um, that's the phone basically um, slots right in here of course um, the antenna it's got a, a connector that, that jumps up and down with this with this button here um, that will connect to uh, to this RF connector when you slide it in like so um, and then you're good to go so plug in the handset real quick and um, like so and uh, you're good to go minus the battery obviously which will just slide in like so and we have lift off now this is the battery obviously the uh, antenna which you can swivel around um, and I'm gonna drop this because this is quite heavy and just show you the handset now because this is e-tax obviously it's come up with the red light and that light means there's absolutely no service um, that's the power LED um, if you want to place a test call obviously you dial so I'm gonna go 999 it ain't gonna do much because um, you know it, there's no cell towers so you'll get the um, the usual um, call connect connect by pressing that don't know if y'all can hear that um, actually what I will do is I'll put it back on here um, because conveniently these phones um, when when they made these these actually incorporated um, a hands-free as well so if if you actually dialed the number um, and then press dial um, it had a, a microphone hole um, uh, somewhere on here I'm not too sure where this one actually has the microphone hole but it, it's got a loudspeaker uh, just there so um, and you could hear you could hear that um, quite clearly uh, that, 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 that the call won't connect so uh, just to go through the menu then real quick um, to get to the menu you got a dedicated menu button down here you could just go in here uh, you get menu and you use the uh, the pound and star key or the pound and hash key to uh, to navigate so you got general um, call tones timers secure security um, and service and uh, transportable I don't know what that's short for so um, going into general if you want to select that you just go M plus uh, and then you got obviously menu one one menu one two menu one three menu one four um, and a whole bunch of options now the really early models of this um, you couldn't actually jump from one menu option to another uh, so you notice that that's gone to two one which is obviously um, if I go back to, to that it's one six now if you think this imagine a, 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 a tree a menu tree um, and obviously um, if you go into menu again um, the first branch would be general the second would be call the third would be tones etc if you were to select option two and then scroll backwards to the last one you'd get option one six so um, option two two option three uh, three one and obviously three one is obviously the tones menu so you've jumped from option two to, to three and th this was quite modern uh, if you if you take out a, if you if you go through the menu of a a Motorola I don't know 7400 X for example which is also in this shape the handsets a little bit more modern than this um, actually um, the menu is completely different so um, w worth noting anyway um, so uh, let's try and change some of the tones on here actually um, so you got silent silent keypad the way obviously to enable that was uh, to select M plus uh, and obviously that would be then on and, and you notice that uh, the keys um, the keys shouldn't make any 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 sound A silent keypad I don't know why that's oh but it's off so if you go on and obviously then you don't get any beeps or anything I'm going to disable that um, and you can use either C or M or M plus to um, to change the options uh, some of the, some of the older phones it's only M plus uh, if you if you take some of the really early Dynatax um, or even actually the micro tax um, you uh, you only get one button that will change this so um, going through then uh, let's see if you got any ringtone 
uh, if you're able to change the ringtone, and I'm not even sure about it actually. Um, I don't think you are. I don't think you can actually change the ringtone on these. Um, you probably just get the standard Motorola ringtone, um, which actually I will try and show you. Um, it's got a, a couple of uh, volume buttons, so I think to change the um, to change the ringtone level, you'd go that, and obviously press up or down, and you can hear that obviously decreasing, and that changes the uh, the, the volume of the ringtone. There's only one ringtone on this, um, I believe. Uh, certainly, I've not found a found a thing in the menu. They do a dedicated um, sound off button. Um, I'm not sure if that is actually to silence the ringer if the phone ever rang. Uh, I've yet to work it out. So um, it, it's got a memory recall and obviously memory one memory add buttons. Um, I don't actually have a menu for this particular one, um, so I haven't worked out how to put the numbers in. Um, it does have a, an alphabet on the keypad, so presumably this did have a phone book. Um, I got a fellow collector of mine who's uh, who's got one of these, and um, he, he seems to think that uh, you, you could actually put numbers in. Um, this is the more modern version of the BT Emerald. They did a really earlier one, which actually uh, I was going to do a separate video about. But just to give you an idea, um, this is the really early one. Um, and when I say really early... Um, I do mean sort of uh, 89 probably um, because um, you can tell this is the earlier one because the British Telecom logo is different. Uh, if you compare that to this, um, the, uh, the, you, you can actually look it up. If you wiki, Wikipedia, when British Telecom changed their logos from, from, from this, which is the old logo, to that, it'll give you some sort of idea of the age of these, uh, of these phones. Um, and that's got the original number, but I'll, I'll try and do a video about this as well, um, which is a similar sort of phone. Um, and, and this is the, um, the classic British telecom. I don't know if you all can see that, but it's, um, this bit is a little purple. Um, I don't know if the light is very good here, but you can just about tell it's got a little dark purple tint, which actually, if you, um, if you look at some of the, um, the old Dynatac British telecom phones, like for example, this one, this has also got the little purple outside. Um, it's not black, the outside is actually, um, the, 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 it, it's sort of a really dark shade of purple. Um, worth considering anyway. Um, so I'll try and do another video about this particular one um, at a later stage. So um, that's pretty much all I have to say about this particular one. Um, these are heavy, so um, if you're carrying one of these around, you'd know about it, because um, you'd get a, short, a sore shoulder about, um, on, on the shoulder that you carried one of these um, so um, all in all a, a quite nice phone this one this one's in pretty good condition for what it is the cord is actually immaculate um, so whoever you had this um, obviously didn't use it much because um, it's in pretty good shape so um, please check out some of the other videos that I have on here um, and uh, give me a thumbs up if uh, if you like this phone or any other phones and uh, thanks for watching